this is uh, Tinder Adab uh, from the University of Modern Reggio Emilia, Department of Economics and Microbiology Foundation. Again, I'm a bit uh, uh, um, touched by the fact that this is the very first conference uh, uh, in memory of our uh, estimated colleague uh, Marco Biaggi, who is going to take in place uh, um, all online. And uh, I, would I would like to uh, thank all the uh, organizers, all the people, all the, comi the committee who has uh, allowed us uh, to have uh, such a good support in terms of uh, um, online uh, presentation and also uh, all the participants in, in, and all the ones who are participating from countries where it is maybe very early in the morning. So I thank everyone for being here and for allowing us to have uh, such an excited, uh, exciting uh, um, conference and session. So um, this uh, workshop six uh, um, that is going to start uh, now is about social protection and regulatory uh, policies for autonomous work, the case of Italy. So we will uh, basically deal with the uh, three presentations uh, that are going to be uh, all around this theme and topics. Uh, but before starting uh, uh, with uh, the session, I would like uh, to underline uh, that uh, there is a young scholar poster session that is uh, taking place all uh, over the conference. And I hope you can go there and uh, have a look to the video piece of uh, um, the participant of the Young Scholar for the session. Uh, we used to have it uh, first, not as a poster session, then as a poster session with a wonderful poster all around the foundation when it was in presence. But now this is not possible, of course. And uh, uh, we asked this afford to have a video piece uh, with uh, the um, in a natural the natural the uh, sense of the um, of the paper so i would very much like to that you uh, will go all, all they are in the youtube channel of uh, marco biaggi foundation all over the uh, conference uh, and so uh, there might be a moment where you can go there and have a look so uh, please do so and uh, now uh, we can uh, progress with the, the organization of our session. We will have, uh, first of all, uh, Chiara Garbuglio from uh, University of Foscari of Venice. She's going to talk to us about autonomous workers and the responses of social protection systems to deal with transitions. Then we will have uh, Caterina Mazzanti from the University of Udine, who is going to talk to us about economic dependency and contractual imbalances, imbalance of self-employed workers in the Italian legal framework. And then uh, to uh, conclude our session, we will have Giovanna Pistore, who is going to talk about self-employment and social security in the Italian system how to change course, because we will see that there is indeed the need of changing the course. But I won't uh, um, go ahead now with presentation. I will leave the floor uh, to Chiara Garbuglio and will now disconnect for, so that, uh, Chiara, you can go in with your presentation. Thank you, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, I am sharing my. Uh, mm, just a second. Uh, so, okay. So, first of all, um, I want to thank the scientific and the organizing committee for uh, their efforts to make this event possible and for me for this opportunity to join this conference. Uh, in the time at my disposal, uh, uh, I would like to explain my paper about the need that states provide an efficient system of uh, active labor market policies for the autonomous workers uh, to give them the um, adequate support uh, to stay and to overcome transition in the labor market. 
So in the first part of my speech, uh, um, I want to contextualize this issue, also taking into account uh, the uh, European and the international uh, point of view. Then I will describe the recent provisions adopted by the uh, Italian legislator uh, to verify whether they can constitute uh, an effective basis for uh, an integrated system of active labor market policies for autonomous. And finally, I will share some proposals um, also on the basis uh, of some European experiences, in particular uh, on the role played by the labor market uh, intermediaries. Uh, the main critical issue about self-employment is that it is a word very heterogeneous. Uh, and globalization and digital economy uh, have contributed to increase this variety. Uh, the range extends from traditional intellectual professions to uh, new up workers, and this uh, diversity is reflected in the relations uh, in relations uh, between uh, self-employment and the labor market. Uh, one of the main risks. Uh, for autonomous is represented by the uh, rapid obsolescence uh, um, of the competence and skills uh, that they have to constantly update to stay in the global and digital market. Uh, the pandemic period has shown the absolute need to provide them a financial aid uh, to support periods of non-work, but they need also active policies to guarantee an effective right to stay in the market and to transition in the market. So they need a stable system of lifelong training, uh, career counseling, validation uh, of skills, and also intermediation. Traditionally, uh, Self-employment has been considered as an active labor market policy itself, but over the past decade it has been considered uh, in an autonomous dimension by European and international institutions uh, who encourage the initiatives to increase vocational training and the right to active support to improve it as an element for achieving smart, sustainable and inclusive growth. So uh, governments have to increase investments uh, and the effectiveness of public employment services also in cooperation with private partners. Um, European and international institutions promote uh, the need that self-employment is not considered only as a bridge from one subordinate job to another, but as a form of work that requires active policies, uh, the access to employment services and social protections. Uh, in other terms, uh, it has to be included into the dynamics of the labor market. In fact, the Italian legislature, uh, with so-called statute of the autonomous work of 2017, has tried to guarantee to them some rights and social protections, including provision that open the boundaries of labor market services for the first time to, uh, to the autonomous. The Article 9 of this law uh, extends the amount and the number of deductible expenses related to professional training. Not only cost for uh, enrolling in vocational courses, conferences and uh, lifelong training are fully deductible, but are deductible also the expenses for personalized sk uh, skill certification, uh, career guidance and support for self-entrepreneurship linked to actually existing opportunities in relation to the condition of the labor market. Um, the expenses of the second group are a novelty, uh, apart from the provision of a fiscal incentive to stimulate professionals to keep up to date, because they uh, explicitly link the active policy to their effectiveness in the labor market. Uh, Article 10 represents a real novelty for self-employment because uh, it extends the accessibility of public employment services also to the area of uh, self-employment. Uh, in practice, autonomous workers can request and obtain pre-qualified assistance uh, in the labor market, uh, which will facilitate them in professional transitions and in vocational training uh, or uh, retraining courses. Um, Article 10 includes public employment services and other public and private actors. And in addition, the number of factors uh, involved um, is extended through the instrument of the agreements with the um, representative uh, bodies of uh, the self-employed, such as professional orders or uh, private association, which bring together professionals who are not organized uh, into uh, orders. 
So Article 9 links updating and implementation of skills to actual market opportunity, opportunity and encourages uh, self-employed workers to look at training as a tool for building professional identity. Uh, Article 10, for the first time, dedicates to autonomous a specific place for active policies. Uh, with these new provisions, the importance uh, of active labor policies acquire autonomous meaning and value for self-employment. Uh, and with the, the, the instrument of the agreement to involve other actors uh, as the advantage to support public services, uh, but also to answer to the heterogeneous set of professional figures included into self-employment. Um, to manage uh, uh, this variety, the uh, legislator opens to agreement with professional orders or uh, private association because this body known very well uh, the needs and specific markets uh, of their associates uh, and this aspect is fundamental to give to them an efficient and uh, concrete aid. Uh, this association in fact um, are perceived as close by their member uh, and associates uh, and this perception uh, has advantages for professionals who feel protected, represented, supported, but also for the association, which can supervise on minimum standards of conduct and professionalism, uh, and also encourage vocational training. Uh, but the problem is uh, uh, there are many professional figures who cannot recognize themselves uh, in uh, uh, orders or association and for this reason remain without a guide uh, and representation. They are uh, characterized by, the, by a strong heterogeneity and professionalism and often uh, by a uh, geographical dispersion. Uh, so in many European states, uh, uh, different types of organization have appeared to uh, try to provide uh, solutions. For example, quasi-union and labor market intermediaries. The quasi-union are, are uh, self-organized, uh, have a bottom-up government, are often created thanks to the workers' activism uh, using the web and digital uh, platform to uh, a global network. Uh, the labor market intermediaries mainly perform intermediation activities uh, connecting individual workers with uh, the clients, um, supporting professionals also in administrative practices. They take different legal um, and organizational forms, can be public or private, uh, so, much, so much that also professional associations often work as a, um, a labor market intermediaries too. Uh, they all, uh, also have uh, developed organizational schemes to support autonomous workers in transitions, providing uh, access uh, to uh, social rights, uh, training uh, and networking among professionals. Usually, um, they are characterized by a triangular schemes, but there are others characterized by a mutualistic uh, logic in which workers join together to share information and good practices. Uh, developing uh, training courses or useful services for uh, the same professional community. This is, for example, the case of the Belgian SMART. Uh, SMART defends the status of self-employment workers of its members, represents their uh, interest and supports them in professional transitions. It is born originally to help parties to cope uh, with this continuous career, uh, but uh, uh, then in 2017 became a cooperative of self-employed workers uh, and now offers services and promotes training activities to implement skills, uh, exchange uh, good practices and uh, experiences among the, their members. Another example is the French model of mutualistic cooperative of self-employed, the uh, cooperative d'activité à d'emploi. These business and employment cooperatives aim to bring in together autonomous workers while maintaining their autonomy and offering protections. Uh, some cooperatives are opting for a mutualistic uh, form now, allowing the professional to join a sort of mutualistic uh, platform in which uh, the professional are members and employee uh, at the same time. To conclude, uh, Self-employed work is very heterogeneous and uh, discontinuous career and rapid obsolescence of skills 
require constant updating, personalized training and information on the reference mark. Um, states are starting now to include autonomous workers in the dynamics and uh, activity of labor market um, and this is absolutely necessary to guarantee to them their permanence in the labor market. Uh, cooperation between public and private um, is maybe the key to offer to these different workers the effective support. Uh, protection and uh, competencies they need, um, specifically in the addition to the agreement with orders and professional association, it is fundamental to implement and promote the collaboration with the labor market intermediaries, also those with a mutualistic organization, in order to offer personalized services to autonomous but respecting their status. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to you, Chiara. You were really perfect in time. And so let's respect time and uh, go ahead with uh, Caterina Mazzanti from University of Udine. She is going to present now her paper about economic dependency and contractual imbalance of self-employed workers in the Italian legal framework. Um, Caterina, did you get to your presentation? Yes, I'm just trying to share my PowerPoint just a few seconds. Yes, here it is. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. So, thank you. So good evening. First of all, I would like to thank all the organizers, the scientific committee, and in particular, Professor Tindara Adabo for giving me the opportunity to be here today. As you can see from the first uh, slide of my presentation, I would like to analyze, even if briefly, the issue of the economic dependency of self-employed workers uh, in the Italian legal framework. And I will focus my attention especially on the problem of contractual imbalance of self-employed workers. Well, I have to highlight um, how the situation of such category has changed during the last decades. In fact, as we can see from the Italian civil code, self-employed workers have been traditionally considered the strongest part of the contractual relationship. Such category was not subject to a, a special protection till 2017, unlike the case of the employee, who has been traditionally considered in a, a position of weakness and therefore was protected by specific regulations. Well, the only regulation for self-employed workers uh, has been enshrined in the civil code and in particular in articles 2222 and then the following articles. Uh, but the situation has radically changed over time. Today, uh, there is a wide category uh, of self-employed workers carrying out activities that are easily replaceable uh, with each other and there consequently they are in a situation in a situation of economic dependence with respect to contractors this is the situation nowadays um, in which the legislator decided to introduce a specific regulation, a specific law, the law number 81 of 2017, with a large number of provisions uh, in favor of the self-employed worker for strengthening uh, the economic and social protection of self-employed worker. To summarize some of them, they include the protection for the case of maternity, uh, for the case of unemployment situation, as well as the protection in case of um, the contractor takes advantage from the economic dependence of the self-employed worker. So one of the main purpose of the law number 81, 2017, is to tackle the issue of the economic dependency. But what is 
the economic dependency. There is no specific definition of such topic within the law number 81 of 2017. To define, to explain such topic, Article 3 of the law number 81 says that economic dependency is the situation described by the law on subcontracting agreement. And therefore, the economic dependency has two different profiles, two different faces. The first one shows itself through uh, the weakness of one subject compared to another one. Due to their different positions and different conditions in the market. This condition is in itself to be considered as a neutral condition, but could still have a pathologic development, a pathologic consequence, as the subject with a stronger position, with a stronger contractual condition, takes advantage from the situation of economic dependencies of the other one, provoking a contractual imbalance within the contractual relationship. How does economic dependency uh, show itself? And how might economic dependency provoke such imbalance within the contractual relationship? Well, Article 3 of the law number 81 of 2017 points out two main cases of um, economic dependencies of this kind of pathologic situation of economic dependence. The first one is the case of contractual clauses that allow payment terms exceeding 60 days, one-sided changes to the contract in favor of the contractor, and the case of the clause that allow to withdraw from a long-term contract without an adequate notice. So all these cases, all these clauses are considered by Article 3 as unfair clauses. This is a kind of blacklist, we could say, which is described by Article 3, which is very, very similar to another case uh, within our legal framework, which is the case of the Consumer Code. Article 33 uh, of the Consumer Code described a kind of blacklist of unfair clauses which provoke uh, a kind of imbalance within uh, the contractual relationship. So we can see how labor law is trying to find solutions to the problem of the imbalance relationship by using tools from private law, which is something really atypical if we consider the traditional remedies of uh, our subject. So, um, which are the remedies against these unfair clauses? There are two main remedies. The first one is the general uh, remedy of the uh, ineffectiveness. So these clauses are automatically considered as ineffective. The second remedy is the right to claim for compensation for damages. Going ahead, uh, Article 3 described another uh, situation, um, another situation in which economic dependency shows it, its uh, pathologic development. The second case is the refusal um, of the contractor to sign a written contract, which is considered by Article 3 as unfair. And why uh, is the refusal of the contractor to sign a written contract considered by the law as unfair? Because it has the intention to take advantage from the economic dependency of the self-employed worker, allowing unilateral changes uh, of the contract. So in this case, Article 3, provided for specific remedy, a specific remedy, which is the right to claim for compensation for damages. The 
strange thing we could say is that this right rises automatically from the refuse to sign a written contract. So it rises automatically and independently from the presence of a real loss or a damage. In other terms, in this case, the civil liability seems to be exceptionally uh, used in order to uh, prevent damages and to maybe to punish also the wrongdoer and not to compensate for a real damage as it traditionally of course um, within the Italian legal framework. So we are uh, experiencing, uh, we are experiencing um, a, a very very new uh, way to use the civil liability in the labor law field. So the main question, uh, the main problem, the main issue we uh, will have perhaps in the future uh, is about the purposes of civil liability, which are the purposes of civil liability. Civil liability is used uh, in order to compensate, but also to prevent and to punish. So we are assisting to a new figure, a new nature of civil liability, a figure of civil liability as a multifaceted um, kind of, um, of figure. So um, I finished my presentation. I think I'm in time. Thank you very much for uh, the You definitely session. are, really. Thank you for your um, respecting the time. And now I will leave the floor to the last uh, speaker of our um, uh, workshop, uh, Giovanna Pistore from the University of Florence. She is going to talk uh, uh, about uh, self-employment and social security in the Italian system, how to change course. I leave the floor to you, Giovanna. Thank you very much. I am very happy of being here today. I was listening very carefully to the interventions of my wonderful colleagues, and uh, they already gave uh, very interesting suggestions, which are very useful also to frame the issue I'm going to talk about. Just a moment, I'm going to the, uh, okay, to the other side. So, the creation of a, social, of a social security statute for independent workers, and specifically for professional, not organized, in orders, is a very debated and solved issue in the Italian legal debate. The probable reason is that that, that theme and rich implications questions the very foundations of social security and the way we think about self-employment and labor law. Traditionally, social security systems have been constructed around the figure of the permanent employee, while the social security consideration of professional self-employment uh, was based above all on a juridical and sociological misunderstanding, which identifies the professional with his own economic activity. Also in EU regulations, I've mentioned the commission recommendation of the 6th of May 2003, Self-employed persons are regarded first as enterprises subjected to the rules of the internal market. But on the other hand, we have to consider that uh, also professionals are people who face events of life such as parenthood, illness, work accidents, and so on. And in many separational sources and in Italian constitutions, so constitution we can think about Article 38, the entitlement to social security benefits is defined as a fundamental right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. COVID-19 emergency has emphasized the lack of coverage already existing, but before the pandemic, the urgency of giving self-employment a stronger protection floor was already perceived. In Italy, the process started with law number four of 2013, which laid down provisions concerning the representation of self-employment not organized in orders and redesigned the access to the profession and its development in order to guarantee free competition for the promotion of skills. Then the other law already mentioned today, law number 81 of 2017, uh, introduced greater contractual and welfare, for, and welfare protection for non entrepreneurial self-employment in a, a sort of protectionist perspective where the worker is regarded as a weak subject in, in need of protection. 
The aim of my speech is uh, analyzing, which is the social security statute for self-employed workers. And I will try first to understand how the social security guarantee is implemented or should be implemented. And then I will consider some social security risks uh, and in particular the current situation, uh, which are the dystonias still present and the solution that could make up for the gaps in the system. One of the key elements uh, of the right of social security is the adequacy of the benefits, which must be sufficient in quantity and duration so that everyone can enjoy a reasonable standard of living. This aspect is considered in two uh, articles of the Italian Constitution. The main article is Article 38, uh, which establishes that workers have the right to be assured adequate means for their needs. Moreover, Article 35 states that the Republic protects work in all its forms and practice. so, practices. So we can see that uh, these articles trace an extensive meaning of work, which includes not only subordination, but also the various categories of self-employed workers. The right of social security embraces all workers, irrespective of the contractual scheme used. This right to adequate social security benefits underlies a logical antecedent that is uh, the integrity of the contribution position, and this position depends upon the ability to pay contributions and consequently on the continuity of income. So when uh, approaching to, um, the, um, to frame a social security statute for independent workers, we have to consider the working means that allow the creation and maintenance of the institution's position and to analyze the way the social security system itself grants the integrity of the contributory position. As regards uh, the first point, the, uh, some significant innovations have recently been registered. These provisions at first glance seem to have just a purely labor related or civic commercial nature. In reality, they present meaningful repercussions also in the field of social security. So we have Chiara already mentioned the placement system for professional self-employment, providing for the establishment at the job centers and authorized intermediation bodies of a dedicated office. This rule, Article 10 or Law 18 of 2017, has not been implemented. Then the guarantees in payments have been intensified. So the extension of the provisions of a legislative decree 231 2002 against gains in payments and then the validity of clauses already mentioned by Caterina. Then a, a very tricky uh, rule has been introdu introduced, which is the fair compensation with regard to the services provided to banking and insurance companies, large companies, and the public administration. This uh, rule has raised very sharp reactions uh, because. Uh, um, the detractors believe that the measure undermines free competition and brings disadvantage to younger professionals. Otherwise, those in favor see in fair compensation an opt for way to stand to the independent work, the constitutional principles of proportionality and sufficiency that characterize the remuneration of the employees. So uh, that considered a uh, um, compromise solution could perhaps be adopted hypothesizing a distinction between social security contributions and the perceived compensation. So the compensation, oh, there's a, a question, or oh, I'm running out of time. <laughs> the uh, compensation should be freely negotiated by the parts. Is there a question, Jacopo? No, okay. <laughs> The compensations should be freely negotiated by the parts in the development of competitive dynamics between some minimum and maximum rates settled by law or by the professional associations. Otherwise, uh, uh, social security contributions uh, must be agreed as a mandatory part of the fee settled by law. Now, I like to uh, analyze uh, very briefly the structure of the social security relationship. This relationship reflects the assumption of the business risk by the self-employed since it is a bilateral bond between the worker and the social security body. So the worker himself pays his own contribution. Uh, as concerns the structure, uh, there are some elements uh, mm, a bit tricky. First of all, no minimum contribution is required by the social security body of self-employed professionals. This is okay, but uh, uh, considering social security, um, the amount, this affects the amount of social security benefits and the possibility to ask for them uh, risk to be affected. Then another curious thing is that 
the worker who does not pay the contribution due will not be subject to the penalties if he assesses the litigation reduction procedures provided by tax legislation with the revenue agency. The arrangement reached is enforceable against the social security body and excludes the applicability of interest and penalties. However, the calculation of the contribution is determined on the basis of the lower agreed sum with consequent repercussions on the future social security benefit. So a question arises. The solution adopted so far are imposed inevitable or instead it's time to reshape the same basic principles. One way should be changing the structure of the insurance relationship and making the client pay social security contributions in a way similar to what already happens as concerns taxes. That said, I'd like to analyze the existing benefits very briefly. Uh, at this purpose, we have to distinguish between events that pertain to the professional as a person and affect his earning capacity, so accident, illness, disability, and indication according to the constitutional dictation, and those concerning the gain, the gain self, for instance, unemployment. As regards to the first kind of events, some steps, some steps forward have been made, so uh, the benefit of sickness and maternity to self-employment, uh, to self-employed, have been provided. Then, uh, in the event of illness or accident of such gravity as to stop work activities for more than 60 days, the payment of social security contributions and insurance premiums is suspended. Maternity allowance is now paid regardless of the extension for work. And then uh, the leave for parental care has been extended for a period of six months. This provision is a bit discriminatory if we consider the duration of parental care as regards uh, uh, subordinate workers. Which are the missing benefits? First of all, there's still no protection in the case of accidents at work and occupational diseases. The rule, uh, in fact, regards uh, artisans, and so self-employment uh, is uh, uh, out. This uh, um, rule is a bit is a discrimination because, first of all, according to Articles 38 and 35 of the Italian Constitutions, accidents and occupational diseases are considered for all workers' events that generate social relevant needs. And then the presence of, uh, sorry, I don't know, my slides are going on. Uh, okay. The presence of a professional risk is confirmed by many provisions of the Occupational Safety Code, so it's provided the use also by self-employed of suitable devices, the possibility to benefit from health surveillance, and uh, the document for the assessment of the risk of interference also is provided with regard to intellectual services. Some possible solutions are the enlargement of the protections already existing or the uh, provision of a compulsory private insurance with a possible role of the associations of the professionals. Uh, Giovanna, since the time is elapsing, uh, can I mm -hmm. ask you to go towards the conclusion? Maybe we can go back uh, yes. to this point later. Yes, give you there are also problems as concerns unemployment. I just want to say that the Court of Justice recognized the fact that uh, the, uh, the self-employed self person is, could, should be, could be unemployed, and this is also already recognized in Italian rules. During the COVID pandemic, an indemnity was recognized towards self employed workers, but uh, of course, we have to select uh, the reasons to provide uh, these uh, benefits so we can perhaps borrow the reasons already provided uh, for the redundancy fund. I just conclude that despite some progresses, the current construction is uh, uh, inadequate and the system remains in a backward position in which the full consideration of risks and needs is presumably linked to the type of contract. Law number 81 of 2017 proposed to build a system of rights, but uh, uh, turned out to be a missed opportunity. So a change of vision is required, which by affecting the system implements a greater protection of the contributory position and the coverage of situations that are still, still unprotected. Thank you very much. Thank to you, Giovanna. I will now uh, again uh, go to share just a few considerations uh, and then I will leave the floor to questions uh, from the and if there are already questions you can definitely go ahead but uh, just now to uh, i will start with uh, some reflection on uh, caterina mazzanti paper basically um, she started by making clear that the first norms on self-employed 
were based on uh, um, an, a figure, a, a position in the labor market that uh, the reality, uh, the economic analysis of this uh, person was really in contrast with what we could observe in the norm. So she described quite well the fact that the new uh, um, self-employed so-called war statute basically was introducing a specific protection to the self-employed worker, not uh, having in mind uh, a figure, a, a position, um, a self-protected uh, position that was not there in reality. And actually, uh, the three paper make it clear that uh, there is not uh, uh, just one uh, self-employed position, but there is, uh, and especially in the Italian situation, is uh, very much uh, full of uh, many different, uh, with, def with also uh, different uh, uh, weakness uh, um, and uh, different uh, uh, characteristics that should ta be taken into account, but definitely are not perfectly taken into account by the current legislation. And on this regard, uh, Caterina was uh, uh, talking about, uh, well, uh, apart from uh, many things in the paper, I just want to pick up uh, some points, uh, like uh, introducing maternity protection. Uh, but then, uh, when it comes to uh, what is written in the rule, um, there is something that it is, at the end, um, not, has not been applied actually. On one uh, on one side, she was talking about, uh, for instance, the unfair clauses based on uh, a different legislation, which is not basically a labor law, but it is. It comes from other uh, other laws. Uh, in a sense, uh, they were written in a way that uh, they, at the end, were not so much applicable. And so I would very much like uh, her, while I'm taking this uh, paper into account, I'm also posing some questions. And of course, if there are other questions from the floor, uh, please uh, just raise your hand and ask. But that is my question. In, on this hand, uh, you can see that there is uh, there are rules that are not applicable. And then uh, you deal also with the concept of economic dependency and how is it framed in a way that then it goes to uh, a difficulty in applying some rules connected with a different degree of economic dependency. But also when it comes to the maternity leave, there is a, a norm, a rule about uh, uh, the possibility of being replaced by other trusted self-employed workers and uh, this uh, uh, is actually very difficult to be seen in reality. So I would like uh, um, to ask Caterina, why do you think it is so? And uh, uh, what would require this norm to be enacted, to be uh, really implemented? And uh, I agree with you that uh, the whole uh, discussion should really require a thinking of the relationship between private and labor law, especially when you talk about uh, these clauses that are not basically applied and why. And uh, Chiara Garbuglio um, uh, show us the transformation in uh, the, uh, put at uh, um, focus a focus on the transformations in the forms of autonomous workers. But then uh, she also described in the Italian case the development of social protection, but also the heterogeneity in the needs by different forms of autonomous work and uh, in services and the heterogeneity by region in development of dedicated services and actions. She was making uh, us a very interesting uh, example uh, based on uh, uh, European cases and uh, where uh, she was uh, explaining us uh, what, what, how much was important that uh, professionals felt uh, being represented by those associations. And uh, uh, or, or um, in, uh, two different interesting cases were treated by her. And I would like her to go back to these. Uh, and also whether she knows uh, 
how much this uh, association uh, were also uh, helping uh, uh, these professionals in, during the pandemics because uh, uh, we could see that uh, in some uh, countries and also uh, in Italy there was uh, there was also um, a difficulties in recognizing uh, and in trusting an association uh, in the difficult situation and uh, uh, especially given the fact that uh, there is a, a still a big imperfection in social protection of these different categories and uh, this is a very crucial issue in my opinion so the issue of representation and on, on feeling of being uh, uh, represented and uh, so in this case it is it, it is very interesting and uh, uh, she was also mentioning the importance of vocational training for tra transformation and transitions and uh, uh, when I remember the very first moment uh, I was engaged with uh, uh, surveys on uh, different type of uh, um, self-employed workers I could see that they were not really bargaining on uh, on earnings on the possibility of uh, having uh, especially in in the term in some positions but they did really try to bargain upon uh, vocational training because they were really uh, very much aware of the importance of uh, uh, developing skills so that is in my opinion still a crucial point and i thank you for reminding us uh, this point uh, then going to uh, giovanna uh, pistore um, she was talking about she was talking about uh, self employment and social security and again all these uh, paper really brought us to the very core of the problem first of all when we talk about social security in case of self employment we can definitely debate upon the very concept of social security because uh, also this position are very much fragmented, discontinuous, not only a discontinuity in income, but a discontinuity in the activities. And we saw that they have suffered a lot also during pandemics. And that brought these uh, difficulties and uh, um, imperfection of uh, uh, the rules and of the uh, current policies in order to cover them. And so also uh, she brought us uh, to reflect upon uh, how is really self-employment treated in labor law and uh, uh, talking about the extension of social security benefits to self-employed then it comes uh, a question that brings me to points that you were discussing about the reasons of inapplicability of certain rules such as the rule on the placement system for professional self-employed, but also the imperfect risk coverage. Basically, you were going through these when you were talking about uh, some uh, risk that there is not perfect, uh, not perfect at all uh, coverage, and other instead there is coverage like parental care. Um, so there is also the very, the very big difficulties by uh, this kind different uh, positions in self-employed uh, were basically getting out of the business for um, say a few months uh, is going to make very difficult to go back to the same uh, number of clients and uh, uh, business basically so again again uh, Giovanna was uh, uh, talking and uh, making us reflect upon rethinking about labor and social security categories so it is uh, uh, this is my reflection but uh, and there are some questions for each one of the um, uh, speakers that i thank again for the nice paper and especially the presentation and also the presentation but i would like also to um, ask uh, if there are any questions from the floor uh, we are very much uh, happy to take them and to pose to our uh, presenters. And waiting for the question, if uh, you would like to take the floor, either Giovanna, Caterina 
और ग्यारह प्लीज दो So maybe I go back to the questions and I ask uh, to you one at a time. So basically for uh, Katerina, I wanted really to, uh, mm, to listen to your uh, reply to this question. You were talking about uh, the inapplicability of some rules uh, and uh, you already talked about it during your presentation. I wonder what you think about uh, other um, norms that are in the, in the law, in the, the self-employed work statute. But basically, I leave the floor to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for, very much for your questions. Of course, uh, the law number 81 is the first step forward in, in protection of uh, self-employed workers. So the first question you, uh, you asked me um, regarding maternity is a very important one because it shows how uh, there are, uh, even now, uh, very, very big differences between women and men uh, in, in the labor law uh, market uh, between self, women self-employed workers and men self-employed workers. So, um, of course, um, the first protection uh, in case of maternity has been introduced by the law number 81. Um, it is uh, the first uh, step forward um, in trying to uh, find an uh, equality between uh, women and men uh, in this um, field of uh, the labor uh, law market. The problem was that in case of maternity, self-employed worker um, were replaced uh, by, uh, by uh, the clients and now uh, they have, instead of this kind of very precarious condition, they have, even if uh, a weak, a first important protection. So uh, we are uh, expecting uh, an evolution also in the protection of uh, maternity in the next years, of course. Uh, but we have to remember that there was a lack in protecting such categories. So it's a, uh, it's a positive intervention, the one that has been made by the legislator with the law number 81, because it broke the silence in these uh, situations. The problem uh, going ahead with Article 3, because maternity is not um, described, is not uh, regulated by Article 3, by the problem of uh, the economic dependency. Uh, so going ahead to Article 3, the problem of Article 3 is that it has not been applied. So we have no cases specifically concerning the application of Article 3 because Article 3 shows uh, many problems. For example, this, this provision on uh, the right um, to claim for compensation for damages, um, it, which is a kind of automatic right, as I said before, um, it is very problematic. There is no specific a provision concerning the criteria of uh, this uh, compensation, kind of compensation. So the judge, when he's called to apply the rule, um, he, does, he doesn't know how uh, to uh, compensate, how to decide which criteria have to, to take into account in compensating uh, the, the damage. Of course, one of the uh, most frequent cases um, of abuse um, is the case um, of uh, the, the clause concerning uh, the payment uh, terms. So the payment terms exceeding uh, the 60 days, which is very common uh, in, uh, in the reality. But I cannot say that uh, we can analyze the situation uh, through the lens of Article 3, because Article 3 um, has been never applied uh, so we are waiting for uh, an interpretation also by uh, judges of this article. 
So I hope to have answered to the questions. I wanted to stress the point that uh, you are perfectly right about maternity uh, and uh, um, the, need, the need of, uh, and it, this is uh, really a step forward. But I wonder what else can be done in order to make it really applicable because uh, uh, most of the time it is very difficult to let self-employed accept the replacement by other trusted self-employed workers. So it is uh, probably a point of uh, make, not only making it uh, known, this kind of uh, yeah. norm, but also, of course, to, uh, to have a system that is going to help uh, in uh, really becoming uh, applicable. It is a different case about the other one, but uh, still a very uh, interesting and challenging. Uh, now I leave the floor to, is it uh, Chiara who is, would yeah, like to? I'm here. <laughs> so, um, uh, I want to, in the paper, I underline that uh, uh, about uh, representation, uh, that uh, uh, traditional unions uh, uh, have tried to include new workers uh, by setting up specific structures yeah. um, uh, for incorporating uh, new workers in, uh, in their uh, structures, but uh, um, it's difficult uh, to new workers uh, uh, feel the um, feel close to these um, traditional structures uh, and uh, of uh, uh, unions and I think in fact that the uh, key of these new organizations um, is the uh, bottom-up government so uh, they uh, are born uh, thanks to the activism of workers and I think, and I underline this aspect of my, yes. my paper, uh, that the, um, uh, these associations are perceived as close by uh, their uh, member. And this is important because um, it, in the uh, implementation, in the operational implementation of labor uh, market policies, it is important that these uh, policies are known by um, by the subject that a teacher uh, make a voc do the vocational training and this is the fundamental aspect the sense of uh, um, the sense of, uh, uh, of to be together in the same conditions I think uh, and I underline this aspect in my paper because I think that uh, the uh, provision of uh, Italian legislature about agreements allows this uh, um, faculty, this possibility to um, increase the numbers of subjects, subjects that are close to uh, self-employment, self-employers, uh, autonomous workers in general. I, I don't know uh, if ACTA uh, that uh, is association uh, in an uh, Italian association who collect uh, uh, self employers or a uh, smart uh, because also smart uh, uh, is uh, active in Italy. I don't know if uh, they are pro provide with uh, um, an economic support, but by uh, but I think that uh, the main point in this period is. Um, uh, the possibility to share with the others, members of uh, the community, uh, the sense of uh, belonging to a, to a community. Yes, thank you very much, Chiara. I think it, it was very important to stress it. You stress it well also in the paper, but I think it is uh, could be very interesting to see what is going on now in this uh, in, in this uh, very difficult year in terms of uh, how to what extent this being uh, very close uh, to the needs and to the um, type of uh, self-employed worker uh, work uh, could uh, have uh, even increased this sense of uh, representation and that in my opinion is very interesting also to go ahead with this and uh, now I, I would leave the floor to Giovanna if she wants to uh, add something to uh, what I was uh, asking about. Uh... Thank you very much. Uh, as we are social security, there are many, many things to say. I'm sorry, I've gone, I've run out of time. Uh, 
the problem, the main problem is the hybrid nature of self-employed of self-employment because as we have said on the one hand we have an economic activity on the other hand we have a person and this emergency in a very rough way has concerns the shape of a protection regarding unemployment because given there's a direct assumption of the corporate risk, so the link between the conduct and the event is intertwined with the very exercise of the economic initiative by the worker. So uh, we cannot uh, distinguish very well uh, the worker's role in causing the uh, protected event. Um, I think that one thing uh, should do, uh, should be done, uh, can be done, Mm, perhaps uh, I'm saying something uh, um, extreme, but uh, we should uh, change the way uh, social security contributions are paid. Also for pure self-employment in Italy, we have many kinds of self-employment and also the uh, structure of, this, of the social security relationship is a bit different. But as concerns professionals, I think that uh, social security contributions should uh, be withholded by the um, by the um, by the client, by the customer, as uh, in, a, in a similar way of uh, what already happens uh, as concerns taxes. So this happens with this happens with taxes because there's a public interest and. Uh, this doesn't happen as concerns uh, social security contributions. Also in this case, we have a public interest which should be protected. Thank you, Giovanna, for uh, your uh, reply. And uh, now I think unless there are any questions on the floor, but I cannot see at the moment, uh, I would like just uh, to thank you again for your presentation and the discussion and also again, uh, bring to your attention uh, the possibility to enter the uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel of the Marco Biaggi Foundation to have a look to this uh, poster, Young Scholars poster session. And I would say that for today, uh, the conference is over. We will meet again uh, tomorrow. And I would like again to thank uh, all the assistants uh, and uh, uh, the participants who stayed with us uh, uh, till now. And uh, I wish you a nice evening to recover forces and to come back uh, uh, tomorrow to another uh, interesting and uh, stimulating uh, um, series of workshops uh, in this uh, conference. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Bye.